Welcome back to my channel. Hit that subscribe button, you guys. I want to be able to go live and let you ask, ask me questions and chat, and I'm super excited about it. I did want to go ahead and do my part two video of Asperger's and women, and I am um, strongly recommended that you do not use this as a diagnosis for yourself. You must go to your family doctor and get a referral for a psychiatrist to give you the assessments so you can be properly diagnosed, okay? If a few of these do hit home, that's normal, but if you are noticing that almost every single one of them sound like you, then you definitely need to go get tested because Asperger's shows up in women a lot differently than it shows up in men, okay? I didn't even know I had Asperger's until I started doing some research on it. Once my son was diagnosed, the only thing I knew about Asperger's when he was four years old was that that Sandy Hook kid had done that to the school and that he had Asperger's. And so I came home terrified that my son was never going to be anybody. He was going to be disabled and at home for the rest of his life. So these places kind of give you a diagnosis and shove you out the door. And so you need to find a support group if you are diagnosed and you need to do your own research because you will have a better understanding if you do. All right. And so I never thought that I had Asperger's because I saw how my son behaved and that wasn't me. But it did remind me of my father. And so I felt like that my dad had Asperger's his whole life because sometimes he had no filter and he said some of the most outlandish things. And um, an example being... Now, please, this is going to probably gross out some of you guys, but I just want you to understand that when he said this, he didn't. He thought he was joking. He didn't understand that people in the room were going to be appalled by it. So it was his one-year anniversary, and he held up his glass and did the toast thing, and he said that if he died that he wanted to be cremated and put into a douche bottle and... Put in his wife one last time when he died. Now we all like were mortified. I could not believe my father said that. He could not believe that we all thought he was serious. And he just was the only one laughing and nobody else was laughing. And so I felt that once I found out my son had Asperger's, my dad had already passed away. So I started asking people, do you think dad had Asperger's? Do you think this is where it came from, from Gage? And so I asked around and they said it is hereditary. And so it made a lot of sense. So then I got my dad's headstone for his grave and I needed his DD-214. And on that piece of paper, when I got it, it said he was discharged from the army honorably, but it was from a personality disorder. And that's what they called it back in the day. So I started researching Asperger's in women and found out that it was totally different. And I came across this study of a hundred women and all 100 women had these certain things in common. So I uh, did my research and I started noticing that all of them made sense to me. Like, this was me. I was seeing these definitions and it was defining me. And so I came to terms with I needed to go see my doctor and I got tested and come to find out I have ADHD and Asperger's as well. Now, it doesn't mean that it's hereditary to all your children. I have three children that do not have it and two that do. So um, just make sure that, again, you're not self-diagnosing and you're not going by what I'm saying, that you actually get out there and take those assessments because it will change your life. And I found out, once I found out my dad had Asperger's, that my son was going to be successful. He was going to move on with his life and do big things. My dad was a police officer. He uh, jumped into a lake when someone tried to kill themselves and save their life. And to this day, that person continues to thank me for what my father did. He went overseas and guarded John Negroponte when the whole war was going on. And that was an ambassador overseas. And he trained his canine dogs to end up sniffing out bombs overseas and then when he came back here he continued to train canine dogs and sell them to police departments and his favorite drug dog was nitro and he decided to keep nitro when he retired from the police and nitro is buried with him in his casket because that was one of his final wishes was to put nitro's ashes with him so they could be an eternity together and so I just thought it was an aha moment whenever I got that paperwork and found out that my dad had a personality disorder and that's why he was discharged from the army. 
And this was something that he protected because it was frowned upon back then. People did not really want to associate with people with personality disorders. And they were misfits to society and just kind of shoved to the side as no hope. So I just want you guys to know that you can go on to do big things and that you are smart and amazing and I think Einstein had Asperger's. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but somebody super smart that invented stuff um, did have Asperger's. Sorry about touching my hair. When I wear it down, it's really hard not to touch it. Okay. So, the first part one, if you scroll through my videos, you will see Asperger's part one, and that was about uh, Asperger's and women and their innocence. This next segment is about our escapes and our friendships, okay? And so, if a few of these sound like you, again, remember, that's normal, but if you are saying yes to almost every single one of them, I highly recommend you talk to your doctor about it. All right, so... The first one is a woman with Asperger's survives overwhelming emotions and senses by escaping in thought or action. So when we are overwhelmed and something is going on around us, we will take our mind somewhere else to get away from that. If we are like getting chills and scared, we will take our mind and put it somewhere else so we don't obsess over those things. And another thing is that we escape regularly through imagination, fantasy, or daydreaming. So you can catch me all the time staring off into space, and someone could even be talking to me in that moment, and I'm staring off in space thinking of something totally different. And so this is very common in women with Asperger's. Also, we escape routinely through fixations, obsessions, and over interest in subjects. Okay, so this is another reason why I um, am, is, am covering the Watts case and have been following it for a year is that I can easily get fixated on things. And with me being from North Carolina, moving to Colorado with my husband, him choking me out to the point I passed out. I mean, I woke up thanking God that I was alive because instead of passing out, I could have died. And that happened to me in Frederick, Colorado, right off the interstate, just like Shanann and Chris. And, um... Uh, it, there's this huge trailer park there. Yes, it's a trailer park. Bring on the hate. Um, I lived in a trailer park in Frederick, Colorado. I didn't live in the nice suburb, but it was right off the exit behind the Burger King or Hardee's. There's some kind of fast food there. But if you guys are familiar with Frederick, you know that uh, trailer park. There's a swimming pool in it, or at least there was when I lived there. And that is where my husband choked me to the point that I passed out and woke up with him freaking out. So, um, also reason because of my Asperger's that I want answers in this case and I can't stop until I get answers. So hopefully one day we will get them. We also escape through mental processing. I am constantly processing things and trying to figure out how I can handle them better, how I can react better, how I can do better. We also escape through rhyme of words. Constantly, I am um, saying things like sugar booga, um, just constantly making up jingles. That I've done that my whole life. As soon as I hear something, I will hear a little jingle with it in my head, and I'll start rhyming and saying them over and over. I promise you. It is kind of odd, but it's part of my Asperger's. And also, we philosophize continually we're always giving you all we're very philosophical we're always giving you the what if and well if it happened this way we're dissecting and analyzing until the point we are beating a dead horse and we also imitate people on television or in movies now i notice that i can watch a country movie and af or be around country people and afterwards i'm talking like this hey y'all what you doing and, I mean, it's crazy. And so, I am very, very impressionable. And I was that kid that I watched a karate movie. And afterwards, I was going, yeah, yeah, all over the house. So, and then when I watch things, even to this day, like Desperate House, not Desperate House, Real Housewives or something like that, I'll find myself, like, 
getting dressed up to the nines and holding myself proper and wearing heels and so I imitate things off of TV. It's 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 true. And then when you're younger, you treat your friends as pawns. This says in your youth. An example, friends were students, consumers, and members. And yes, when I was younger, my friends, all I could think about was what they could do for me. I didn't drive until I was 19. I didn't have a car until then either. And so most of my friends, I manipulated into doing things for me. And so I would get rides, say, hey, you guys want to hang out? When all actuality, I just wanted to get to somewhere else. So I have learned from that now and I am a very good friend, but I had to learn that in my younger years. Also, we make friends with older or younger females more so than friends with your own age. It's often in adulthood. And yes, when I was 30, I was hanging out with a 21-year-old that was my best friend when I lived in Longmont, Colorado, and I worked at the Outback Steakhouse. My best friend was a girl named Laura. She was 21. We hung out ride or die. She was my homie, and I was 10 years older than her. But yet, we got along so well, and even now, one of my very good friends that come over to my house and we have girl time is 15 years younger than me. So... I don't know what it is, call me immature, but that one was spot on. Also, we imitate our friends or peers in style, dress, attitude, interest, and manners, and sometimes speech. Now, I already told you that, that I'm, I'm influenced by my peers, and that I... If I get around somebody that is really aggressive, I become aggressive. If I get around somebody that's kind of quiet, I'll stay kind of quiet. And so it's it's just uh, amazing how spot on all these things were. And once I read this research, whoever did this research is awesome. You rock lady because you made my whole life make sense. And so... Also, we obsessively collect and organize objects, okay? And I do the same thing with books. I am constantly having a book and knowing I need to get rid of it because I'm never going to read it, but I will save it because I think that later on down the road, my interest will change and that I will want to read the book, even though I think it's dumb right now. So, another. Also, we are... We have mastered imitation, okay? So I can imitate anyone. And I can also imitate things that um, that I couldn't before. Like how to respond to grief and how to respond to a sad friend. And when I was younger, I had no idea. I would just stand there awkwardly and wouldn't know what to say. But I have learned to imitate the way that you are supposed to act. And it is genuine. I promise you it's genuine. It's just that I would respond to something in a different way. And you would think that that was inappropriate or abnormal. So I have learned the appropriate way to respond and I'm happy to do that because I know that that's what you need. You need an appropriate response in moments like those. You don't need my off-the-wall inappropriateness, okay? So that's me breaking that down. And bring on the judgment. It's fine. This is me opening myself up. And so I am going to just ignore anything negative that people have to say. And we also escape by playing the same music over and over. I have put the music on repeat so many times. And now I only listen to 106.9 The Light, which is praise music. And um, I love those songs and I could hear them over and over. People get tired of songs and don't want to hear them anymore. But not me. I love hearing those songs over and over. We escape through a relationship imagined relationship or a real one so women with Asperger's sometimes will take things the wrong way and we will think that a friendship is a relationship and so we try to escape our regular lives through that relationship and we become everything that person wants we like what they like we kind of become them and it's not cool and we don't need to use relationships to make ourselves feel better and I learned that the hard way and that's why I've been alone for four years and my life has been awesome so 
that it also says that numbers bring us ease and could be that numbers associated with patterns or calculations or lists or time or personification. And we escape through counting, categorizing, and organizing and rearranging. That is me all the time. When I am so, when I am stressed out to the max, I will rearrange my bedroom. Once I rearrange the bedroom, I'm like, oh, the living room needs to be rearranged. So I can change the direction of my life by rearranging. It's crazy because I feel like that I am getting a fresh start and starting over and I'm constantly organizing things. And I will start with one room at a time and I'll just get that whole room organized one day and then I will go do another one. So it brings me peace whenever my house is organized. Also, um, we escape in other rooms at parties. And so I could easily, in a house full of people, go to another room and read a book. Okay, I like being alone. It's just something that I enjoy. I like the peace and no chaos and not being drug into conversations. And you know that happens a lot these days where couples are arguing and they want to drag you in the middle of it. And also, we cannot relax or rest without many thoughts going through our head. There is, a, every time I lay down at night, I try to lay down when... I'm exhausted because otherwise I will just lay there and my thoughts will race and race and race. And depending on what I think about before I fall asleep, that's what I will dream about. And so I make sure not to lay down in the bed to sleep until I am ready to pass out. So those thoughts aren't racing. And number 20, which is my last point with women with Asperger's, is that everything has a purpose. There is nothing nonchalant in our life. There is nothing that is unimportant and that everything has a purpose. Everything. And that I can hoard certain things because I feel like that I might need it later or that it has a purpose in my life. And so anything that people do has a purpose. And so I'm always trying to figure out what was the purpose or reason that somebody did something or what was the purpose that I did something. And so that is how my mind thinks. And if you were relating to these 20 things, go back and watch part one video and make sure you watch the other parts because the next parts are going to be about our comorbid attributes. So thank you for watching. You guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe. I want to go live and all my subscribers are going to be entered to win um, some of my products that I sell. So I'm super excited before I even tell you guys about the products because that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to make money. I am doing all this work, you guys, and I am not even at 500 or subscribers, okay? So it's not about the money. I am putting a lot, a lot of work into this channel because it's my outlet and I love it and I am just excited that you guys enjoy watching me and I finally have something for me, for Mama Beauties. I have something that I can call mine and mine only. So cheers everyone. Love you bunches. Thank you so much and we are halfway to a thousand you guys or almost. Bye.